Okay, just as the title implies, I'm going to talk about Enix Calendar. But the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take the ball that hypnotizes the globe and you're going to have to throw it away. Otherwise, none of this is going to make sense anyway. For any of this to make sense, you're going to have to first forget everything that you think you know. Take you a calendar, any calendar, that's like this. Total bullcrap. And then find a certain day, and I got them circled on this one already. Count the weeks in between. Count the days in between. Start from one to the other at the right point, spring. Count 364 days. This is four years worth, and they're accurate. Everything from the names of the months to the names of the days of the week. Total bullcrap. But there are hidden things within the names if you know how to look. 7, 8, 9, 10. They keep track of these things even while they lie to you. 7, 8, 9, 10 because they roughly are close to the real 7th, 8th, and 9th, and 10th months. What is a day? As for where you stand, a day is whenever the light begins to shine in the east, and whenever it goes out in the west, that is a day. As for a 24-hour day period or whatever, that's just this. That's just a device that tries to track with true time. My opinion of it is that a full cycle of a day is begins at the evening and ends at the evening. Might sound religious, but... That's the best way it makes sense. A day pertains to your location, where you stand at noon. Because where you are at noon is the middle of your day. If you use one of these and operate on real time, you'll need to constantly calibrate your noon, I don't know, weekly, maybe monthly, however you want to go about it, your choice. But this does not keep accurate time. That's why you have to adjust your noon. If you wanted to know what a real calendar looks like, this is a crude version of what it would look like. Seasons with the days, all like they're supposed to be. I put the I put the names of the days of the week above so that it's easier to reference. You know, going from a lie system to a true system, you gotta use what you know. And that is today third day of the fourth week in the tenth month. Or it could look something like this and this will let you keep track of the sun throughout the year in each of its gates. Just like that. Okay, now moving on. This is uh, the gate system and the parts of light on the days where their parts change. A lot of people I've seen, they draw out their gates like this or this is how they lay it out and that's not how it works. They work like this. I also drew it like this for anybody that this was too much to handle. So, in the solstices, one and six, your readings for tracking the sun are a lot harder to get because the movements are very small from day to day because of the changing of direction of the sun. Just like anything that changes direction, it has to slow down, stop, speed back up. Something to this effect. It works like that summer and winter. It has to slow down, change its direction, and go back. The moon does the same thing. In the book of Enoch, it talks about the parts of the day, the light and the dark, and how they change throughout the year. Now, this is just what I come up with, with that information and information that I've collected firsthand. And that's obviously like an equinox. 
nine parts and nine parts. Winter solstice. Summer solstice. This is just my version of what it could look like from the side if you were ever able to see it from the side. The light patterns that are, that is. The light patterns from summer to winter. I've already done a video on this concerning what is the first day of the week or the seventh day of the week even. And people might be wondering, how do you know what day of the week it is and all that? Well, I've done explained it. But there might be some out there saying, well, how do you know exactly when the solstice takes place? Or how do you know exactly when the equinox takes place? Some people might say, but the equinox is going to happen right here this year. Or next year it's going to happen right here. Or just at whatever location it is overhead. First off, who's telling you when that exact point is? Beware of who you listen to. Beware of listening to me if, you know, that's what you got to do, but get the information for yourself. You can do it. You can collect the information. You don't have to take nobody's word for it. Definitely don't take the system's word for it. Before, I have used time and date to get references, and guess what? That is part of this system. You got to do it firsthand. Collect your information. You do not need this world's systems of education or their information to understand that the calendar Enoch gave is correct. In case you don't watch the video or didn't see it, Wednesday, Odin's Day, seventh day of the week. That's how they keep track of these things. Sunday, the fourth day of the week. That's how they keep track of these things, right in front of your face. I've already done a video on this too, so I'm sure people's tired of seeing it. But this is the device I use to measure what I need to measure concerning the sun and light. It probably needs updated. Needs a little fine tuning. But it does work. And it's pretty accurate. Any time of the day. But there is a lot of information you've got to know in order to use it correctly. Depends all on your location. The sun keeps track of days and years. There's no aided need of the moon for this. The stars keep track of it too, but on a bigger scale. The descriptions about the moon in the Book of Enoch are a little bit hard to understand. The way they're worded is a little, I don't know, unfamiliar maybe. But all it's trying to explain is the relationship between the sun, the sun and the moon, and their relationship and their positions overhead, and they're going from gate to gate. That's pretty much all it is. The phases, the different time periods of the month, 28 days, 29 days, 30 days, all those have to do with is their relationship of their positions overhead, how they go together. That's why you'll have a shorter, a shorter month, lunar month. The sun keeps track of months too, don't get off on that path. The moon is kind of like its own unit. The moon measures things most people can't even comprehend, maybe even beyond our short lifespans. If you try making a calendar off the moon, you're never going to have it right. The moon does not keep track of days or years. The sun does. What gate the sun's in and its direction from which gate it's going to, the gate the moon's in and the direction it's going to, their distance from each other and their location overhead, moon phases. This, is, this explains the relationship between the sun and the moon. It explains moon phases, it explains moon periods, all kind of good stuff. And I would have to say a moon's period is its time of the month. When it goes from full moon to full moon, that's its time, that's its period. 
and that's observable. What they call a new moon makes no sense. Why would God give you something to track, something that you can't even see, that new moon that they call it, whenever the moon is with the sun? That makes no sense. So a real new moon is a true full moon. And when she is illuminated throughout, her light is accomplished full in the heaven. And on the first day, she is called the new moon. For on that day, the light rises upon her. She becomes full moon exactly on the day when the sun sets in the west, and from the east she rises at night, and the moon shines the whole night through till the sun rises over against her, and the moon is seen over against the sun. A new moon is a full moon. The last full moon back in December was in gate six. The next full moon will be probably in gate five. Just my guess, I'll check when it happens, but. These are the things that are overlooked and they're pretty simple or just never looked at because everybody's under the spell of this world and not looking at anything true. I was looking at the light chart that I just made and may have made a discovery on lunar eclipses. I don't know. I'll get back with you on that. So the book of Enoch, the calendar, everything in there. The Catholic church don't want you to have this book because it exposes their lies. Take that as you as you want. It's full of some good stuff. So I guess we're done here. Thanks for watching.